All right, everybody, let's get started. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited to be kind of in this first session. I'm excited to be back at Florida Drupal Camp. Um, how, how many people have been to Florida Drupal Camp before? All right, so we got some new folks and some returning folks. So it's exciting to be back in person. I'm, I, I can't tell you how much I've waited for this moment. Um, so today we're gonna to talk about mind mapping, a technique for architecting software. Um, and it, you can actually use this for other things. Um, and a little bit about me. Um, my name is Mark Shropshire. I go by Shrop out there, and uh, I'm a senior director of development at Media Current. And there's a lot of interesting notes about me. Um, but um, but at any rate, re just love for you to reach out after the session or anytime uh, if you have questions following us, because I think this is a fun topic um, to share and talk about. And again, I'm at Media Current, and um, yeah, we we bring together talented team members um, to work on mostly open source solutions. Um, and while we're known for Drupal websites, we also have been really active in the Gatsby community and building a lot of uh, integrations with Drupal and with Jamstack. Um, and uh, something I'm interested in that we don't do at Media Current right now, uh, but our parent company does, is I'm into Flutter. Um, is a mobile device you know, like iOS and Android development tool, so that's kind of another uh, side jam that I have going. Um, so, what are we going to talk about today? Um, we're going to dig into what exactly are mind maps, uh, and then we're going to jump into like how do you actually create a mind map? Um, how many folks have heard of mind mapping before besides this title? Okay, how many people do mind mapping? Uh, in Okay, well great. Like, we're going to talk about how to get into it. Um, it's not a tool that you have to use all the time. Like, this is just a tool in your bag of tools or whatever that you can use when you want to. Um, and then we're going to talk, well, this is the exciting part really, is like some ideas on how you could use mind mapping for software architecture. Um, but what's really neat about mind mapping is you can use this for like planning projects around your house. <laughs> you can do it, you know, for all kinds of things really. But this is the first time I've presented on mind maps where it's really about um, more about software architecture. And we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. And if you have questions um, throughout, like this is pretty informal and casual. I love the camp vibe. So just make sure to ask questions throughout. We don't have to wait until the end. So let's jump into what are mind maps. This is the definition from Wikipedia. Um, I feel like it's accurate, like all things on Wikipedia, um, but it makes sense for mind mapping. So really it is a diagram, and it really is about trying to visually connect ideas and thoughts uh, together um, so that you can kind of encapsulate. Have you ever had a time where so much is going on in your brain where you, you're like, I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where to begin and I don't know, I don't even know where to start. And so. For me, until I started using mind mapping, I did a lot with like outlines, and I might do, like, computer science world used to call them flow charts. I guess they're still out there, but those are still useful tools. But um, this has some particular use cases that I think are really great. So, come on in. This is the mind mapping one. You definitely want to be in here. No, 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 come on in. I'm kidding. Um, and, uh, uh, I love doing that. So. So I'm gonna show some examples of mind maps because I think that helps more than anything because it is visual. Um, so you can hand draw a mind map. This is not mine. Uh, I, I am not a great illustrator, but by the way, you don't have to be a great illustrator or something like, or artist to do hand drawing. The, the person that did this one um, is, I think, pretty talented. I think they're really good. Um, and so they started right in the middle and they said, we want to mind map ideas around time management. And so that's, what theirs looks like. And it's really cool because every mind map can look just so different depending on how you work with it, whether it's hand drawn or using software to do it. We'll talk about reasons today, like where you would decide to use a digital system to do it versus maybe drawing it um, out like this um, or in some other formats. But, um, but as you can see, someone had a lot going on in their brain about it. And if, if this was one person doing this, um, at least with the ideas, and I, you know, I don't know how you kind of make sort, you know, sort all that out if it's all in your head until you get it down in some format. Um, 
And I really like how they, not all my maps have like actual um, like art or icons or imagery going with it, but to me that really helps. If it was all text, there's so much going on here, it'd really be hard because I'm drawn to the like like this gift, or I'm drawn to the um, I mean, what else would I be drawn? Well, I think the books are kind of cool, but I think that helps, and it's a great reference if someone has to go back. Um, because time management is one of those things where we work on all the time. Like we get good at it, we feel like we're doing great with it for a while, and then we slip into like, oh, what's going on? I'm, I'm, you know, can't things seem to get things done, and I don't have a good balance. So when we get to digital formats, this this is a mind map I did, <laughs> and it's digital, and it's just an example, um, uh, and so this is with software, obviously, but. Uh, it still gives you the same idea. Um, and with software, you can do imagery, you can do icons and things like that. Um, but this uh, software, we'll get into the tools uh, a little bit more, so don't worry uh, about that. Um, but this is an example where I was able to um, uh, help somebody out with like, hey, here's some things to think about on your business tech stack. Like, you're starting a new business, and what are all those things you might need? It was also an example for mind mapping talk um, that um, that I did with a friend of mine in a co work space, but um, you know, so it's not you know, it's maybe it's not a complete example, but it still gets the idea across. Like you definitely need sales and marketing and accounting and communication tools, and so um, I mean, it, it was helpful actually. Now that I have this, may refer to it <laughs> if I'm ever talking to somebody about you know starting a business or some startup type situation. So, and, and by the way. That's not what all digital systems look like, you know, for mind mapping. They all have a little different design look and, and aesthetic. Um, this is MindNode, is what I use. But we'll talk about some others. Um, and again, you'll hear me say this. I, just like for developers, like, don't get lost in the tools. Um, that's important to pick something, but it, the real point here is to be creative and actually start mind mapping. So use what you have, use what's free and readily available. If you find value, you can decide to purchase tools or whatever from there. Um, so, so you might ask, all right, Shrop, um, this sounds great. Sounds like another thing I've got to do, maybe, but like, when do I even use my maps? And here are just a few places where I found, I found my mapping to be useful. Um, so I have used mind mapping kind of for note taking, where like if, and this is, this might not be mind mapping for notes in a meeting. Uh, I usually do outlines and markdown or something like that, or in Apple Notes is what I use a lot. Um, I wish Apple Notes used markdown, but it doesn't. That's the only thing about it uh, that bothers me. But um, that'll be an improvement someday. But I use outlines a lot for like just meetings at work and things like that. Um, but. For note taking, I'm thinking more like you go, DrupalCon's coming up, there's there's gonna be keynote presentations and things like that where people are really talking about higher level ideas and things like that. And you can kind of do use mind mapping to do that. And um, another um, a somewhat related uh, great way to note take is uh, sketch noting. Has anybody heard of sketch noting? Um, that's a little more where you get a little more artistic, but you actually, and if you just Google it, you'll find tons of examples in Google Images, but that's where you're, you're literally sketching the things out. But I still kind of do a mind mapping format um, for the note taking. Um, decision making is great. We'll show some software examples uh, for software projects for that, um, on how to actually you know, make decisions using the mind map because you're getting those ideas out there. Um, my favorite brainstorming uh, example is probably where you're you're on a, a call. And now it would be virtual a lot since we a lot of us work remote and, and we've not been in person anyway. Um, um, but you know somebody can use like Zoom, like the whiteboard technology in Zoom, or if they want to uh, maybe have a tablet or something like an iPad shared on Zoom, you could actually have someone mind map with a group as you're actually working through ideas. And then at the end of the meeting, you have a deliverable you can kind of share with everybody and say, Here, here's the mind map from that, take a screenshot of it, pass it on, and people have that to add to their notes. So I think brainstorming is really fun. And sort of related is the planning aspect um, of mind mapping. And, um, and so uh, there was a, I actually, one of the mind mapping 
uh, sessions that I've done in the past. Um, we actually did a live um, planning session where we kind of planned actually how to do future sessions at this co-work spot, like what we were doing. So it was really kind of interesting. And um, everybody in the room got involved. People got to give input and say, well, what if we did this? And we have to market it a certain way. And come to find out, that group actually delivered ideas to the co-work, uh, the folks that run the co-work spot that they had never thought of. Um, so that's a lot of fun. So, um, but I think this is one of my favorites, organizing complex ideas. It's really getting those, that complexity down into a diagram so that you can reference it or you can just have it out of your, out of your brain. Um, when, and it, it helps me a lot when I'm overwhelmed. Um, so not, not that projects ever get overwhelming, right? Software projects, they're usually pretty simple and straight ahead. So, um, but there's other ideas like, you know, you can come up with other uses. Um, but I do want to talk about the outlines because I mentioned that a little bit. And, you know, what about outlines? I love making outlines. I love taking notes in outline format and tabbing and writing in Markdown or whatever um, to take notes because they're great ways to reference things. And I'll just do notes in bullet form a lot and drop links in. Um, I've used Bear in the past in the past on the Mac and iOS. I've, I've I'm, I've switched Apple Notes recently, but there's tons of tools. That's not the point, right? Like, there's tons of tools. Use what works. Use what's available. Um, I think outlines are fun. I think if you're in a meeting and it seems like outlines are working great, use the outlines. Uh, don't force using mind maps on something. But once you get used to mind mapping and where you can, and you've practiced it a bit and you're used to using it, then then explore where mind mapping might work. I just consider it just a, another tool to help uh, with things. Because I like taking notes, even if there's somebody officially taking notes on a call or something, just because I, I, you know it's in my kind of words and um, and uh, format. So it's it's a lot of fun. So let's jump into creating my maps. So getting started. So this is the real practical piece. It's this is so simple. You're not gonna believe this. This is easy. We're gonna just start. Just right. You can, well, You don't have to start in the middle, but. Start in the middle with like the main idea, like what is the topic? What's the name of the meeting? What's the uh, Florida Drupal Camp? That could be in the middle. We're planning for Florida Drupal Camp 2023. Um, so we start with that in the middle. And from there, we branch out and we create these sub ideas or these sub thoughts. And they're, these are, in a lot of systems, these are called nodes, um, which I find hilarious. <laughs> so you basically have all of these branches that come off, these nodes that come off the main idea. And you saw in the previous example, marketing, accounting, you know, all those things are examples of what those could be. There's no right or wrong, by the way. Um, I have to resist not being a perfectionist about this stuff and just moving and keep it moving and keep mind mapping. And I'll just tell you, that's a struggle I have, like trying to like, oh, I didn't even that out. And I start going into that, that, um, that sad place where you stop the creativity. It's about being creative. Um, and just here's another note, but use colors, shapes, imagery to convey ideas. Like just experiment with that. Um, whatever works. I know this diagram is kind of boring so far, but um, but you can do that. It just depends on uh, your use case and, and you know your skill set on it. And here's an example where you've got some other sub ideas. I know it's kind of and this monitor is probably blocking a little bit, but you've got some sub ideas here that are a different shape and color just to show that I, that you can do that. Um, and you can even like encapsulate ideas, like sometimes I'll draw a circle or oval around something or a box and just get creative with it uh, for fun if I'm doing it by hand. And that's to show that there's, you know, there's, they're connected somehow, right? It's just, it's kind of obvious once you kind of get in the flow. Um, and then you can even connect ideas. So it's real common in my mapping to just say, wait a minute, but this thing does relate to this thing. And you'll see this in some software examples here in a bit. So a lot of times I'll, uh, I will actually do that and just draw a connecting line, um, you know. And again, no right or wrong, so you can kind of do my mapping the way you want. Um, but, um, but I do, I would suggest like if you Google my mapping and maybe for software, like I can't say that I've done that recently, but I know you'll find examples and you could decide for yourself, like I like that or I don't like that, it, you know, it works for me or not, uh, and get ideas. So as far as 
is, is like really tips on um, working with mind maps and, and building them. I think like being creative is like the number one thing. That's just so important. Like keep it moving, keep it flowing, have fun with it. And which, which reminds me of something. I had a conversation yesterday with, with uh, uh, um, I can't remember somebody, I've talked to so many people now, but I was saying, I, I remind myself all the time, like even walking in here um, to present uh, to this group, I'm not mapping. Shrop, you're going to have fun. This is fun. Remember, you wanted to do this. You're going to do this. Don't be nervous. Have fun with it. So, um, so remind yourself to have fun. Like this is, you should enjoy and have joy in your work. And, and so being creative, I think, is a part of that. And we don't, I know I'm not a visual artist. I am not. I'm a musician. That's my outlet for that. But, um, but I can still be creative. You know, I can do my best. Um, <laughs> And uh, with with sketching things out, and I don't have to worry, you know, about it. So don't worry about that artistic skills. Um, you, you will improve. Like I've improved somewhat, um, but um, but you know, that's not that's not really my goal. I'm using it more f pragmatically f for software and stuff. Um, using colors and different shades we talked about, and associations. And really, it's about that flow. Um, you know, use it as part of the process. I, I with software. I, I, I a lot of times just want to dive into code. I, you know, it's that temptation. Like I know what I'm doing. I'll just die. I'll just start coding it. But every time that causes me problems. I always realize that I should have planned. We should have planned more. Or what if we had planned this better? And so, um, so I think this is just part of it. And that's part of your overall flow. Is uh, whether you're a developer, or content contributor, or you know, designer. It doesn't really matter. Like. Um, I think it's valuable to mind map uh, in certain cases. And you can have your own style. I think that's, uh, that's fine. Mine's not super impressive, but it's like works for me. It's, it makes, uh, makes things nice. Um, so I did say that we talked a little bit about mind mapping tools. Um, I just don't like to overemphasize this too much, but people have to know where to start. Like, you know, they have to have some idea of what to use. So we'll kind of talk through some of just These are just a few. There's a lot of software that does this. Um, so my node is what I use, and I'm I'm kind of always been for a long while, well, a long time, like more of a Mac user, iOS user. So this is a great tool because it syncs across all the devices in iCloud, and it works. That may not work for you. you Maybe on Linux, you may be on Windows. So there are other tools, and so we don't get hung up on it. Um, I, I know I have uh, a number of uh, friends that use iThoughts X. Uh, or 10, we never know if it's X or 10. We'll go with X in this case. <laughs> but um, that one is, I think, Mac and Windows. Um, I do believe there's an open source uh, uh, option out there too. And I did check it out, but I'm not sure it's uh, maintained as much, so I didn't put it on here. Um, and, and by the way, these two tools, I thought, they're kind of in the same genre. They're desktop and mobile, um, and they don't really have super great sharing. You can export PDF and other formats and things like that and share with people, but their, their strong suit is not collaboration. Whereas MindMeister, um, you can sign up today, this weekend, while wait, 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 you have all this time available, right, to talk to people and have fun. MindMeister has free accounts, and um, I think that one's a really good one for collaboration because you can have multiple people in that system at once, and you can see what they're doing, and um, I think you can do two, it seems like you can do two or three mind maps at a time and have them say, you know, works. But while I'm talking MindMeister and collaboration, I <clears throat> had a conversation this morning already, and it's because none, that's why we're a community, nobody knows everything, right? And somebody told me, said, well, we use Miro to do that. I'm like, wait a minute, I use Miro sometimes too. I completely forgot. You can mind map and do things like that in Miro. So if you use Miro or are familiar with it, that's another uh, good tool. And um, I, I love my iPad, and I love Apple Pencil. It's it's just part of my workflow system, and um, it's more useful as I keep adding more features. But sometimes I'll just open Apple Notes and just go into sketch mode and just mind map in there uh, by hand. Um, and so you know, so think you know, so thinking about that line uh, of digital, like you know, any type of tablet type device, devices with stylus. I know the Samsung S22. I think that's the one. I'm, I, I use Android a little bit, but like, so correct me if I'm off, but that's the flagship I think that's launching now has a stylus. And so there's, we have all this great tech that can do this stuff. And uh, there's advantages for using digital. Um, 
obviously because you can share it and keep it and expand on it uh, from there. And, and the thing that's a little harder to expand on is uh, whiteboard. Um, this is a whiteboard. I hope it is because the Wi-Fi password's on it. I think it is. But um, but whiteboards are great. Like if so, we're right here. We're we're in this room. We're human beings interacting together, doing community stuff. So we, we could use this whiteboard and and mind map some thing we need to plan together, and everybody take a photo of it at the end and share that, and then. You know, you've got that. That's your notes. You know, that's your. That's what you produced as, as, as out of the meeting. It was fun, hopefully, and creative and all that. So it's really good for brainstorming. So don't forget the analog. I, I have to tell myself that because uh, many times I'm, you know, kind of uh, in that digital world. Whiteboarding is just such a challenge with a distributed team. It, it is, and I, and I and I agree completely. And I, and I don't even think a lot of these online tools have figured it quite out. I think it's going to get better. I think. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting to see like, like I brought up Miro, and that seems to work okay. I still have Miro's. I don't know. I'm not an expert with it, so I have trouble zooming and figuring out how to use it. I feel lost in it sometimes, but like that's just me learning the system. Mm -hmm. I agree completely, and, and thanks for saying that. Um, yeah, I, I think this is the whiteboarding thing in person is kind of for us in our communities probably just not a reality. But how can we simulate that that thing? How can we do it? I if somebody could come up with a, with a software as a service type application that would that you could mimic whiteboarding, I'd subscribe in a heartbeat. Yeah, I, I I know there's some different options out there, and I'm not an expert on which ones to say, and it depends on things. I, I one thing that I did do that that was neat uh, uh, with a meme. I've, I've actually linked the iPad up and shared it with Zoom. I've done that. And, and with Apple Pencil, you uh -huh. can do that. Because you can draw if, items and drag them around and move them around. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I like, um, I've, I have terrible handwriting. Even though I have terrible handwriting, I still like that I did the pencil. It feels like like you're, um, you know, you're physically interacting with something there. And so, yeah, that, I, but that may not solve everything, but it may work in certain cases. Have you tried anything else um, besides mm -hmm. that kind of thing? Um, yeah, I, I, Apple Notes, and there's a, um, there's a number of other iPad apps, but I know there are on other platforms. I promise not to get lost in the tools. It, you know, there's just no point. We have to, we're living in a great time. There's so many great tools to use for this stuff, and it's only going to get better because um, it has to. We have to do this. Can you think with all the online learning that's going on, teachers that that's what they do all day is all yep. on the whiteboard, there would have to be something to do. And, they, and, and if there's any teachers in the room, like, they, they might. They might know the stuff we don't know as yeah. developers, any teachers at the camp, because like they probably have, they probably like ah, you people, you developers, <laughs> we 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 know how to do this stuff. They probably do have some of that figured out because they've had to. Like yeah. it's been a hard couple of years at least, and it's hard before that probably. But um, but yeah, so um, so we'll dive into software architecture. I'm doing good on time here. Um, I did I did the wrench. Seem like we're architecting. That's that's really like more like you're building, but you, you guys can go with it. It's, um, so what I did was I kind of pulled together some just really simple examples of to, to, so that you can be thinking creative about how you could use mind mapping uh, as you work on projects. So I think there's this aspect of visual architecture, and and this is simple. So um, this probably wouldn't be the end of my normal mind map, but I need to make it large enough so you can see it and all that. But, but you can get the idea. Um, so, so we start in the middle, had a Gatsby front end um, is what we're, is a, is a goal here on this project. And we're, we know we're gonna utilize Amazon S3 to store images and files. Um, and we know we're gonna have Gatsby Cloud involved to do builds. And so, you know, it's really a matter of, so something important with Gatsby, this is a Gatsby specific thing, but something that's important in the planning of that is what needs to actually be in the build versus what needs to be pulled in after the browser renders the site. Like you can pull in, a, it's React, so you can pull in API data later. So in this case, uh, for this project, uh, we definitely want to do content builds in the Gatsby Cloud because that stuff doesn't change, you know, that often. Uh, and but then we maybe have some type of alerts or the weather or you know, you know some type of example that's a little more real time. 
we don't want to wait for a build or have to have a build every time the temperature changes or something. Uh, so maybe we connect to Firebase, uh, you know, and have a WebSocket, and that just pulls right into the browser. You know, so um, so that's an idea of like visually architecting. This helps me to see. Like I sort of have this in my head sometimes, and other team members do, but just having it out there, and then we can all as a team agree, like, yes, that makes sense. I mean, we're tracking. It's super helpful. Does, does that resonate with anybody? Does that? Um, and then, so I think comparison of options is interesting. Um, so this started out as an example of like, hey, we're comparing different types of APIs, different technology. Um, and uh, and then we also are talking like, hey, what Drupal and Gatsby, what do they natively support, you know? And so Drupal natively has REST, it natively has uh, JSON API and Core. Well, I'm talking Core for Drupal. And then Gatsby, um, it supports uh, it's it's uh, content matches GraphQL. Um, so so anyway, I was just thinking about different APIs. This would be a great example if you're like, well, what kind of API should we use for certain things? Because there are these are decision points, and it could lead into, well, if we're using GraphQL already, and we have people that are talented with GraphQL, maybe we look at the GraphQL module and use that with Drupal, because there is a contrib module for it. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. You guys tell me, uh, you know. But that that's where the team can kind of talk through it. Um, and these are those connector lines. And that's, again, that's my note. It, it'll look different everywhere, but um, I think that's kind of neat. Um, Y'all ever have to compare options and stuff? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it's not all the time, right? But there's times where you, you're like, and you're nervous, right? You're nervous because someone, you're afraid, like, is somebody going to, like, is it going to, you know, cause a problem on the project, you pick the wrong thing, and the answer is yes, and you won't make mistakes, and you'll get past it. That's the answer to that, but it, it happens. But this can help you, like, I think, this type of planning helps you get to a place where you can make, a, a hopefully, a more solid decision on your architecture. So this is a, a example of a site map. Um, I don't know if it's right. I'm not, I'm not a, like a strategist type person, or, Really, you know, content architecture for me is more, uh, I think about it more in the Drupal standpoint of like, how do I apply, you know, how do I apply the content into Drupal fields and, um, you know, paragraphs or layout builder or things like that. But for people that, that do need to look at and get into, you know, navigation and, and how content is laid out, my maps are a place to start. And this is an example where you might start here and get so far, but then you transfer it to another tool later that's more robust, because you, it, you know, sitemaps can get complicated. And, uh, you know, so so that, that's an option too. It's, my maps can be at the beginning of, uh, of a, it could be something you use at the beginning and then you just sort of abandon it and you move on to something else and that's okay, because it got you started. And, and this is something that I like, um, is, is infrastructure stuff, even though I'm not really, like, uh, I have a heart for DevOps, but I'm, and I like doing DevOps things, but that's not my day-to-day -day work. But I think it helps when you talk about all these environments we deal with. Like, how do you, what's talking to what, and what's involved. And I kept this simple, but obviously you could you could get in, in uh, the, the Drupal environments and start saying, well, we've got two databases for migration of content. We've got, you know, you could start mapping out all the things to, to to really help illustrate it. But um, this illustration is just showing like how the environments match up, which is pretty easy. And then to see, and then we, but each uh, Gatsby Cloud, we have separate instances, you know, for publish and preview builds um, in Gatsby Cloud for this example project. And so, um, so I think anytime you want to map out infrastructure, and even though many of us rely, whether it's internal or external, like products to help with our infrastructure needs, um, we still have to know as developers, um, I, I, have to, I feel like I have to understand some level of what is going on with infrastructure so I know, you know, if there is a problem even like uh, with performance, where do I help with that? Where do I improve that aspect? Um, and um, so on this one, th this can help maybe in cases, this is something we maybe don't think about all the time, but you're starting a project, at some point someone has to say who's on the team you know, what skills, what, 
you know, what are we looking for? Um, and you know, there's there's always like probably your default team assignment for a project that you might think about. You know, who's who's in there, but um, but you know, in a complex project, you might even have you might even want to mind map like uh, this role is it needed at the beginning and the end of the project, and maybe another role is throughout. Um, but that's a you know that I think that's an important part, and it might not be you as a developer, but you, you may need to give input on team structure, and you know maybe you know maybe you need to say well the, the, yeah there's a lot of front end work here we probably need a couple of front end developers you know um, so I think that's uh, I think that's also an important aspect um, so let's let's talk some next steps um, as we've been through some of this so. We talked about tools and how to uh, not get lost in it, but you still need to start with something. So my suggestion is identify that one tool and just whether it's handwritten, you know, it's in, it's in a, you know, uh, MindMeister because it's free for a little bit to try it out. Pick something, have it ready to go, so that when you're like, all right, I'm going to try this, and I know it's going to be challenging, it's new to me, and just give it a go. Have it ready to go, so you um, so you don't miss the opportunity to use it when it makes sense. Um, and, and then you can be on the lookout for those opportunities and you can say, hey, um, this is, oh, this would be great to use that thing that, you know, that we learned about at uh, Florida Drupal Camp. And, um, and then you can assess your mind maps and, you know, um, you know, kind of see like, hey, uh, next time I might try this other thing or I might, I might try another tool. Um, and, um, and then I did mention sketch noting earlier. Um, Gosh, I don't know if that's hyphenated. A lot of times it's not hyphenated. Um, I, 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 how many times, I don't know about y'all, but I, I Google quite a bit, like, is this thing hyphenated? Uh, it drives me crazy because I, I don't, I don't want to look like I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, but sketch noting um, is something that I think is neat. I've, I've had this, I've experimented with some of that, and uh, I think you can kind of integrate sketch noting like ideas and practices into mind mapping and vice versa. So, um, so definitely check that out. Uh, I, I, said, I follow some folks on Instagram that are big sketch note um, leaders or whatever, it's and they're just great. Not happy, man. Huh? It's not happy. It's not happy. Okay. It's not. Okay. You got it. Right. Thank goodness. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for checking. Awesome. So, um, it's always when you're like doing a presentation, you're like, how does this? You know, is this? Uh, did I get that right? Um, but um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's open it up into questions that you might have and. Like you know, any experiences you've had? Is, well, we'll start with this. Has any has anybody seen anything today that would like be applicable? Where you're like, oh, I could use that on something uh, in their in their work. I'm sure. I mean, uh, for me, it's just myself back in and on one other front end developer. Yeah. She's a whole lot more organized than I am, so I get a little dependent on her for you know, making all the notes and all that. But I think we're definitely. Give this a try. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, so if you've got a team like that, um, yeah, you can. That's a good point. Anyway, like you can do mind mapping solo, mm -hmm. and you can do it like as a group. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. But it's okay to, um, uh, you know, th we'll get the slide deck shared um, out there on the site. Um, but it's okay to go ahead and just. Um, share that with you know your yeah. team and, and talk just you can because you know I, you probably don't need to spend 45 minutes honestly talking about this like you can kind of get started pretty quick <laughs> right um and so you could go ahead and uh say hey you know maybe yeah. you said it was becky right uh, no i'm ellen you're ellen no but, no, but noelle is mine noelle okay i thought sorry i thought you said a name of a person uh, on your yeah. team but if noelle's the person take it, noelle may be the person to lead the mind map yeah. so she's the front well, she's like the themer okay back in. so i think it would work well where she could do you know show her parts and my parts and then how we're and, and we're yeah going. and she'll have pre then she can guide the tool she wants to use you yeah. know based on and then she'll spend two days perfecting it well that, that, <laughs> she's that, a that, that very happens perfectionist yeah. visual you know it's gonna be good. that's okay we, we need fine. we need people like that yeah, to, oh, to do that like um so um, so, uh, what other use cases do people think in their day to day they well, might use? When you were when you were showing some of the charts up there with the site architecture, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's something that we've struggled a little bit is getting the, the site architecture, which is starting to happen in the design process, kind of handed off uh, to the development team. Um, and, and one of the things that um, popped out at me uh, using the mind map and the, and the colors mm -hmm. is um, defining not only not only what your site architecture is in terms of the site map layout, but also color coding certain aspects of the content. For example, legal terms of service, privacy, about our story contact. That's pretty static, not gonna change very often, but there's a lot of this content that's more dynamic. And it may, in trying to build out the technical solution for that, if you're not wrapping your head around all that, it may be that we're implementing the wrong technology for delivering some of this on the front end and focusing efforts on making um, dynamic content out of things that really should be static and, and instead driving our dynamic content solutions toward the content that truly is dynamic. That, that, so I hadn't even thought about that, but that's a great point. You know, what is more static and dynamic? And yeah, there's what, so there's all kinds of options you could. Um, if it's digital, like MindNode allows you to actually put notes and attach images and documents within it, inside a node. I know you can't see it here. All of these colors, too, are just default. Like, it's what MindNode just did, but you can change the colors. Um, but I, I like that. So, so you could have a creative way to, like, note what's static, what's dynamic, and illustrate that, which can definitely lead to, like, decisions on architecture and how you, you know, want to model things uh, from there. Um, no, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I think, and I usually start out. My style is I usually start out and let it just do its default thing, where it, it you know, when you make a new uh, main branch, um, it'll just pick a different color from its palette, um, and there's different themes that it, you can set. Um, you know, like you can do ones with dark background stuff like that, but then you can just alter it from there, and, that, and that's the way most of these tools are. Um, and, and certainly, if you're doing it by hand, I mean, you could have like a whole set of color pencils, and a, anyway, I'm just, you know, yeah. you could get, you could have fun with this stuff. It just depends on the need. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely cool. Um, yeah. So this is a lot of a lot of times you're saying it's a starting point, but do you ever use it to like have documentation of the setup as a part of your documentation for a project? Yes, I have definitely done that. I, I need to do that more. But um, that, that definitely plays into that some my maps are the starting point that you might throw away. And in some my maps, you probably keep an update um, throughout, just like you would a flow chart or something else. So, so most definitely, and, and there's really, since you can export this into PDF or uh, a PNG or something, there's no reason to not just, uh, whatever tool you're using, grab that, export it to something that everybody can open and read easily on browsers and stuff and drop it right in your docs. I, I think it's, um, even preparing for this talk, like, you know, it gave me ideas for that because this is a lot easier than writing words, <laughs> like, alone, like, just writing it. Sometimes you need to write a bunch of words, so. I think it's to be able to see it all in one screen. Yeah. A lot of times, because I recently did, like, a spec document that ended up being, like, 10 pages because I put all my details to understand what I was doing. And it's like, this is a little unwieldy like to look at as a, another dev to review, um, to be able to see the outline, but being able to see it more visually might help convey what you're trying to convey. Yeah, and in some cases, you still need all that docs and people, and, and we're all different in how we process information. So, like, I'm, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm more visual, so, like, this would make more sense to me, but, like, I know people that are developers that are, like, they're fine reading through a doc, too. Um, so, yeah, I think that's great. You could almost do both or, you know. Or just, I think there is a use case for that. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. It just, it's like, it's like everything. You use it for like a feature too. Like, uh, we want this thing to do this and have a diagram so that your team can always refer to it doing that. Yeah, that, that's, that's right. And, and if it's a, if you decide to make it collaborative, the team can help make changes and make it more like a wiki where you, you know, depending on the need, I like your idea there because you definitely, uh, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to be the one person that can edit the doc in a lot of cases. You want to make sure other people can add to it and make those changes. So I, 
I think you had a question too. Well, I'm just thinking, I mean, this looks like a, a nice finished product to be on the screen, but you know, it, it, to me it's like, it, it's like, there's all these, like, we're talking about ideas and get them out of your head, so it seems like a free association step would be prior to this of just throwing words down and then throwing them into something like this, right? I mean, it, it, no, it's you, you may not know that uh, some of these are going to be going on that might be a sidebar. It seems like that's the challenge, you know, how this all going to transpire. This presumes that you know it's all going to go in these places, right? So the challenge, at least what I have, is like you say, there's too many ideas and they don't know where to start. And this, again, it's to get to this, that there's a step missing to me between it all repressed and being there that I feel I need. I, I think you're right, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you something. Um, I hope I can do this real quick. Um, I'll open up my node, and, and, and I think Miro is really good for what you're talking about, but um, let's see where I can get to this. But this is the sitemaps. But I do want to show you, and, and, and I'm not trying to sell my node, like, I, I don't want to, you know, whatever works. So. But, but like a lot of these tools now have, have integrated outlining. And so as, as I built this, it created the outline. But you could also do reverse. So you, you, could, you could throw those ideas in a list where it's not even an outline yet, just like you're talking about. Yeah. And, and it will then kind of start to build the mind map for you in reverse. Um, so I, you're, you're right. That there's points where you're not sure how they connect yet. But the, the goal is what you said. It's to get into that, that state of getting stuff out of your head and, and having that flow and that association where you get things done. So however it works, and that, you know, you, fit, you, you do what works best for you. And, um, and I, I didn't mention this earlier on exports, but um, this tool and a lot of the other digital tools also allow you to export outlines as, um, I think it's OPML. Yeah, markup language. Um, outline. I can't remember what it stands for, anybody? But then markup language. But OPML, did, did, did you? I, I can't remember. Um, but, but OPML is something that you can import uh, outlines into many other apps, so it makes it transferable. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, I think we've got a couple minutes left, but that's all I've got. And if you have questions, um, feel free, you know. Hope, hope this was a good, and, and I'm glad this was in the morning where everybody has time to like, everybody's fresh and coffee, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, well, Captain. That's right, yeah. This would be hard at three o'clock, I think. So I think the planning committee did well. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.